31 a.m. this morning. I uh, hope everybody's having a good summer so far. Uh, first thing we should do is uh, read the land acknowledgement statement. And that is, we acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe people. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous people of Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land and we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. We have a fairly modest agenda this morning, so hopefully we can get through this and get everybody back to their, their normal day. Um, item three is declarations of pecuniary interest. I'm not aware of any. If anyone knows of any, please say so now. Okay, not hearing any. Um, there's no delegations this morning that I'm aware of. Everyone was circulated the minutes from the last meeting by Lindsay. Hopefully you've had a chance to read them. Does anyone have any questions or concerns regarding the last minutes from the May 4th meeting? Okay, again, not hearing any. Could I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll approve the minutes. That's Brad. And a seconder, please. Aye, Harminder can second it. Okay, thanks, Harm. All in favor? That'll be everybody, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not aware of any business arising from the minutes. There is the um, the grant or the request to council, which was noted in the minutes. I'm sure we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So I think that's the only one. Lisa, is that correct? I believe that's correct, Scott. Okay, perfect. Um, so we've changed the format a little bit of the agenda for today. Um, Kim, we've moved you up in the agenda as well as Justin, uh, just to let you guys go first. And then if you want to, uh, after you're done, bow out of the meeting, that's completely acceptable. If you want to stick around for the whole meeting, that's fine too. But we thought we'd change things up a little bit and give you guys the opportunity to go first and then uh, do what you want after that. So if we could start with Kim, that would be great. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks, Chair Patterson, and good morning, members of the board. I'm just going to um, give a brief update, focus on some of the activities of the last couple of months and direction going forward. So our focus has really been upon um, some of the, the funding that we've received over the last um, period of time. And our focus has been primarily on the, the new um, technology and skills learning hub. The, as you know, uh, we received provincial funding for 1.8 million for that project. And our emphasis has really been over the last couple of months is to get that up and running and processes, branding, um, RFPs, some of the key RFPs for the, the AV system, uh, the new state of the art AV system is going to be at the um, Memorial Community Center um, staffing, um, reporting, it's all pretty pretty heavy at the front end. And we've been um, happy to announce that we, we have had some courses that have already launched um, at a customer service program in, in June, as well as we'll be having um, lock, um, working at heights session in on July the 11th. That session is full and we are um, working on upcoming courses we, we anticipate a number of courses, or some, some courses in August, but the real emphasis will start in September. So we have supervisory training that's expected for um, a one-day introductory supervisory training in, um, in August, and potentially a three-day training, um, supervisory training, more in-depth. That's something we've heard from our employers, that that's a, um, an interest area, especially for smaller employers that may not have that leadership. Um, opportunity to, to to do internal or external training that, that that's being planned. So as well as other technology um, and skills training, tra emphasizing um, technology, skills training, um, essential skills training, and helping um, those that are unemployed to to enter the workforce, as well as accessing all um, upskilling of our, of our work, workers in the area. Those are all um, project priorities that we've been given by the province. So that's an area um, of focus. So um, other projects that we have received funding on, technically they are still confidential, 
we're not allowed to do media um, releases or post information on them. For some, we're allowed to do social media. For some, we are not. So I'm just going to touch on them briefly because the, um, the one in particular has impact um, or of interest to the BIA. So we have received funding um, from FedDev Ontario for a park at in downtown Lisbon School. So we we're pleased that's a project that's from Streetscape has been on the, the books um, for many years. Um, we have received funding for that and that is um, expected to be complete in 2022. So we are going to be working on RFPs for that proposals shortly, as well as um, the, the emphasis will be similar to what was in the, um, the original streetscape plan. Um, the streetscape plan focused on benches and trees and greenery. Um, and just as a reminder, it's the space between, or a small, a small space between um, the TD Bank and Warden Eptigrove on along Main Street in Listowel. So a big impact to visitors benefiting um, the businesses in the downtown core. Um, however, we are, we did have the opportunity to, to do the pilot, having um, tables at that location as well um, last summer, which was received pretty positively and to support business as well as to stimulate some activity in that um, portion of, of Listowel, we um, are hoping to add um, tables to the location as well as public art. So there is the potential for that, um, the space, it was to, to be um, readjusted or slightly increased. Um, we don't have details on that yet, um, but we will certainly work with, with um, partners and stakeholders to, to ensure that it meets everyone's needs, as well as um, the budget that's been give to, given to us. We received, um, the, the overall project is $80,000. We received we received funding for just under $50,000 from FedDev, um, and the municipality will be covering the remainder of close to $30,000 for that project. So as we all know, prices have increased over the last year, so um, we'll need to ensure that, um, that we can meet the budget requirements um, of the project. And our goal is to have everything complete in this year, but we'll we'll see what we can do to, to have the biggest positive impact um, for all involved. And so that's um, the second project. And then we also have been approved for a project for a um, trailhead for, this is the RED program, um, the trailhead for the Moncton trailhead, um, the G2G trailhead. So that has, um, has received funding. We, so some of the areas, I'm just going to, sorry, pull up. So, so things like um, a kiosk, um, the downtown, um, sorry, having trouble with my system here to, to get it pulled up. So things like wayfinding signage, trailhead amenities such as a bike repair station, kiosk, um, a walkway, Wi-Fi and screen software, acknowledgement signage and marketing and promotion. Um, so there's a so a lot to, to happen out there for that project. The project total cost is just under $50,000 and we received funding of um, $15,500 as well as support from the DPG for that project. So, so those um, also will be moving forward in the coming weeks and um, our plans to be complete end of 2022. So we have also been working on a project for an agriculture um, excellence strategy that was approved by council that has been, the initial draft has been received by council. They have been um, reaching out to stakeholders. I'm getting getting further input from stakeholders and that's expected to have, um, to result in a, a final proposal being brought back before council in the, in the next few weeks. And um, we've also been with Drifts, Driftscape updating pro programs and activities and events in our Driftscape program and another, um, as well as the facade program. So the, um, a lot of different businesses have been implementing their construction and projects approved in 2021. So we're really excited to see some of those that are being completed and receiving their, their grant, their matching grants, as well as we have, um, we don't have any new 
um, approved projects, but we've had interest from, I'd say, four to five different businesses inquiring with with different um, projects um, planned for 2022. So hopefully we can announce more of those at the next meeting. And just any questions, I'm, I'm certainly just was continuing as well to work on strategic initiatives or strategic plan, business plan. Um, but those are the, the highlights I just want to focus on this morning. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to, to answer. Thank you, Kim. Uh, any questions from the board? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention one big one big item is that we have an event for the, the Learning Center coming up on July the 19th. So information has come out um, to all businesses and it's, it's um, a kickoff and community consultation trying to get employer input on the different types of training that's happening. So that we're gonna have two sessions that are facilitated between one and three and four to six on July the 19th. So definitely any of the um, board members that, that are employers or um, you know, feel free to share that. I've shared that information with, um, with Lisa and with the chamber to, to share, but that, I'm sorry, I didn't talk specifically about that, but that's a, the, a key event happening in the, in the next couple of weeks. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, two questions for myself, Kim. Yeah. The land for the park, is that municipal land or is that, does Ward not approve on that? Municipal. No, municipal, yeah. And I know we batted around at a bunch of BIA meetings the, the topic of public washrooms. There's no washrooms incorporated in that park, is there? No. Okay. Any questions from anybody else? Design, yeah. Okay, not hearing any. Okay, thank you, Kim. Thanks. Uh, moving on to item eight is a, a presentation, quick presentation from Justin regarding Perth County economic development. Yes, good morning, everyone. Thank you. And uh, through the chair, pleased to provide the Perth County update. Uh, so I'll start with our community transit uh, project, PC Connect. So this uh, week is free, uh, free ride week. So. Uh, PC Connect is offering free rides to, to all riders uh, as an opportunity to kick off summer, get out and about, uh, and experience the service uh, in hopes that, excuse me, in hopes that we can uh, really pique their interest and in, in generate some more long-term riders. So uh, free transit week this week, please do get out and uh, try the service if you haven't already done so. A great opportunity to do so uh, this week. Uh, as well, the Perth County Connect uh, did launch uh, a brand new booking app uh, that's available through Blaze Transit is the provider uh, available through the Google Play Store and Apple, uh, the Apple App Store as well. Uh, so what this app will do is allow you to book and pay for a ride uh, using your mobile device. Uh, really great uh, service and way to enhance the service to be able to, you know, accept different forms of payment. Uh, cash is still always accepted on board, uh, but uh, now having the ability to book a ride with the app, uh, as well as uh, from a backend side, it helps helps us understand where riders are going and provide a bit more of that uh, that data that we need to figure out how to maximize maximize the service. Uh, so that is a really exciting development with Perth County Connect. So that uh, along with uh, free, free ride week this week is uh, lots of good things happening in PC Connect world. Uh, Discover more adventures. I've talked about this usually at our meetings is our, our marquee tourism program for this year, uh, helping businesses get uh, experiences developed uh, um, so that could be again uh, helping a business with an existing experience uh, make it more marketable help a business that's looking to develop an experience on their at their location to work with our our team to uh, develop a marketing package uh, help them refine their experience get some coaching uh, and we think we've kind of packaged that whole uh, you know participate in joint join marketing as well with us uh, it's really like a ten thousand dollar value for a business uh, so we're always looking to generate new, new uh, adventures in Perth County. And uh, if you are if you are a business that has kind of an interest in expanding your offering or adding an experience, please do reach out to our tourism coordinator, uh, Ashley Brocklebank, tourism officer. Uh, and I will say our last, uh, our most recent Discover More Adventures that you can find on our website and social media was uh, Aspen's Ojibwe uh, Horse Sanctuary. So you can go ahead and check out 
uh, what that experience has to offer and uh, hopefully again looking to recruit new businesses all the time for that program uh, you may notice on our tourism uh, social media pages that our, our summer students are really really killing it this year there's lots of cool new features that they're incorporating uh, reels features uh, you name it they're doing it uh, lots of uh, hometown hometown crowd segments coming out uh, with the number of uh, North Perth uh, famous famous folks who come from North Perth who who kind of contribute to why they why they love North Perth why they love Perth County so uh, our summer students this year are really doing an excellent job in keeping things fresh and exciting uh, on our social media pages uh, so we were f finally able to announce that we uh, received some funding through the tourism relief fund to do a uh, cycle tourism strategy in Perth County so this was finally uh, Published, publicized yesterday uh, when the minister was in, in Stratford there announcing uh, some funding for the uh, the festival as well. Uh, and what this cycle tourism strategy will do is allow us to really focus our efforts. Uh, we did do some cycle tourism work uh, throughout the pandemic, kind of taking advantage of the opportunity that cycle tourism presented itself as a an outdoor safe uh, activity that was really kind of seeing a boom during the pandemic. And we really want to uh, at the county take this to the next level uh, so uh, cycles tourism strategy that we're we're launching uh, working with consultant to do so will help us really refine what is a tourism product in Perth County how do we uh, best make ourselves an attractive cycle tourist destination we know that those cycle tourists are uh, are really big spenders when they come to communities so we really want to leverage leverage that and and drive uh, cycle tourism to our our uh, not only our trails but also into our our economic regions, our downtowns, our, our communities to see some of that spending, whether it be accommodation, uh, food, supplies, whatever, what have you. So uh, just kind of putting a call out while I have your attention to any any cyclists who are interested in kind of participating. We're You'll see lots of opportunities to do so over the next couple of weeks and months. But uh, if there are any folks you know who are, are avid cyclers in the county, uh, please do have them contact myself. Uh, we'd love to have them uh, be a part of the uh, working with our consultant to really help us refine that cycle tourism product in Perth County. Uh, so we had a succession planning webinar that was uh, that happened a couple weeks ago between the last meeting. Uh, it was a really informative, uh, quick session with uh, succession matching. They're one of the leading experts on succession planning. Uh, we had over thirty registrants who participated. Thirty registrants who who signed up, and and most of those folks did did actually end up participating, which was great on a on kind of a summer evening. Uh, and one of the things, the, the long-term uh, benefits of that webinar is we will be getting a, a copy of that uh, the webinar recorded and kind of refined into a more kind of condensed, uh, quick quick video for any business as a future resource who's wanting to think about succession planner or, or you know, doesn't really know what it is, but knows that it's something they should be thinking about. Uh, so those who weren't able to attend will still be able to get the, the really critical information that was presented uh, so look forward to having that uh, video up on our website and available to the businesses who are interested uh, in the near future. Uh, we continue to update our business directory. So just again, a general call out, if you haven't updated your business directory uh, with Perth County on our, our site recently, uh, please do so. Uh, that really is a critical thing that we need to continue to communicate with our businesses. Uh, digital Main Street. So we we did, uh, again, it's the last meeting that we did receive some funding to continue uh, recruiting and offering the service through a dedicated digital service squad uh, into the end of March 2024. Uh, so we're currently working on the onboarding of a new DSS person who will be available to uh, continue to offer the digital services to businesses over the longer term, which is great, uh, as well as really help businesses take advantage of uh, some key uh, grants offered by the province. So right now, the digital transformation grant is, is being offered again, which is a $2,500 grant to help a business uh, create and implement a digital transformation plan for their business. So uh, we'd love to have uh, a lot of Perth County businesses take advantage. I know we've had some success uh, in previous rounds, so look forward to having our DSS person on the street, uh, continuing to uh, promote that program and help businesses get both subscribed for that program, applied for the grant, and just with digital service uh, support, which we know is a critical uh, feature, both through the pandemic and beyond. And then uh, just finally, I'll reference two sessions that are being hosted by Immigration and Refugees, uh, Immigration, Ref Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Uh, we know obviously labor force is a 
ongoing challenge. Uh, so there actually is a session, we posted information about this uh, a week or so ago on our social media, but there actually is a session going on today uh, at one o'clock on the Temporary Foreign Workers Program, uh, as well as a session on July 20th uh, on the International Mobility Program and work permits. So again, uh, given the labor challenges that we're seeing in our area, uh, the opportunity to tap into some international talent is, is obviously critical. And these sessions are being hosted by uh, some of the outreach officers from IRCC. So a really good opportunity to find out a bit more about the programs, uh, about how you can apply, whether you're eligible, uh, and whether that's something that can fit into your, your business model for, for your uh, workforce needs. So again, you can find that information on our Perth County social media pages. Uh, session today again at, at 1 p.m. that you can hopefully read, still register for and uh, on July 20th. So uh, that concludes my update from the county and I uh, would welcome any questions if there are any. Thank you, Justin. Any questions for Justin this morning? Not hearing any. Okay. Thanks, Justin. Great. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item nine, which is uh, our favorite part of the day. No offense, Kim and Justin, but uh, Lisa's report. So, Lisa, mm -hmm. if you'd like to give us your coordinator's report, I'm glad I'm. I'm glad I'm everyone's favorite part of the day. Thank you for that. Um, working on lots of stuff happening for summer. It's been a it's been a busy two months. It's been a different two months in the past two years, which has been wonderful for me. Uh, feels a little bit back to normal. Um, so we've had the story walk. It started July 1st, uh, runs till July 22nd. A little bit of hiccups getting it started, but it is up and running now in all the businesses. Um, we've had some people already posting about it uh, and participating in it. So that's great to see. Uh, the first prize will be announced on Monday and we'll do two more after that. Uh, the win local shop dollars. Um, so, so far so good. Um, Sarah Pratt concert is coming along. The actual date has been moved from August to July. So it's July 26th. We'd love to see all of you there. If um, there's any chance of any kind of precipitation, it will be canceled because her violin uh, cannot in any circumstances get wet. Um, and hopefully the rain date will work of July 27th. So we're just having our fingers crossed. Um, currently working on all the materials for that night. Um, she has chosen um, the local high school to receive any donations this year. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, sale days are happening August 15th to 27th. Uh, Spinrite was not sure if they would actually have enough materials um, to do a sale. It looks like there will be some kind of sale, um, but it may not be as large as past uh, years. So we're just trying to work with them in the chamber to uh, promote that a little bit more. Um, I will be giving out information and pamphlets to businesses downtown in the hopes that uh, they will share with me sales we're going to have a facebook event page for it um, extra advertising i'm um, just really trying to promote getting people downtown during that time uh, our vacation is starting august 9th it will run to august 26th um, as of last week there were 22 businesses that had signed up to be a part of it every business that signs up has to give uh, a gift card um, for the promotion so there's lots of gift cards being um, given for our community for the lucky winner. Um, so that's going, that's on plan. Um, also participated in the golf tournament with Scott for the chamber. I continue to do super well at my golf game. Um, my once a year golf game is really improving. Um, flowers are out. Um, in all the locations this year, we were able to put some at the corner if you come into the roundabout. Um, I did um, inquire as to the roundabout. It needs a little bit of cleaning up, so hopefully that's going to get done soon. Um, banners are now, uh, they were up for Canada Day. They'll be coming back down to summer banners. Um, we're going with a contractor because we're just having a hard time um, getting them up. Uh, 
here with um, staff and it's actually proving to be much more efficient and affordable. So that is good. Um, memory lane is almost done, which is very exciting. Um, I'm going to try to share um, something and see if that will work um, just to give you guys um, a sense of uh, what's happening with that. Um, that's not what I want you to see. This is, can, can you see that or? Yes, a little small. It's a little small. Okay, let me see if I can enlarge it. So this is what memory lane looked like before. You can see it's pretty run down. Um, there was garbage in it. Um, so this the this part was done before I took the picture, so it's been covered so that the birds can't nest in there anymore. The municipality did that outside of the memory lane project. Um, this is just, you can see the broken wood and the artwork needs a little bit cleaned up and we need um, the plastic coverings were in pretty bad shape. Um, so this is just part way through. You can see the wood that needs replaced is starting to get replaced. Um, this is all ASIC molding materials, so it's not wood, so it will last a lot longer. Um, and this is uh, almost completed, so you can see that the, it's been painted. Um, the woodwork has all been done. There's new, um, the artwork was all cleaned and restored and the um, the glass, which is not glass, but it's all new. Um, here's just another angle of it. Um, so it's, it's looking a million times better. So the only thing outstanding is the sign. Um, the sign will go here um, and that should be done very soon. And then we will submit to Tiffany, um, who Kim mentioned, um, and get that all organized with the businesses paying their portion, us paying our portion, and then uh, them getting reimbursed. Um, so that is going, um, that's going uh, really well. So I'm very happy about that. Um, sorry, um, how do I now unshare? I'm not really sure how to unshare. Um, I'm not sure why that's not letting me unshare. Um, but that can stay up because I am going to talk about it. Um, we are working on a video, a new summer video, one that doesn't have masking in it all over the place. Um, and we're working with a new videographer off the lens media. Uh, it should be done in draft this week. I'm very excited about it. We'll be sharing it and posting it all over the place. Um, we're also doing a small contest with Diana Sweets on their mural um, that coupled with uh, Memory Lane and some of the art projects that we're trying to get up and running will really hopefully um, just encourage people to be downtown as well as with our flowers. Um, I had been trying to figure out what is going on with um, uh, Polywogs, the location there and BKs. Um, I know someone has approached Polywogs about potentially buying the space, but they want to rent it. Um, and I'm not sure all the for rent information is down on both um, businesses. So I want to think that they've been uh, rented, but I don't know if anyone has information. Um, that would be great to share it with me. Um, I have not been able to work on the directory a lot. It's been really busy, which is good, but also bad because it means I'm not working on the directory as much as I would like. And I know that's something that um, the board would like me to be working on. Um, I did want to share that the chamber is going back to um, a gala, uh, to an event for their chamber awards, and they're actually stepping it up. It's going to be fancy. It's going to be more like a gala. Um, so that will be um, on October 27th. Um, we have in our budget to support them. The amount isn't going to change or what we're doing isn't going to change, but I just kind of wanted to let people know. Um, 
We've gotten new accounts at um, the municipality. So we've gone from like 12,000 different accounts to 3,000. Um, it did impact me. Um, and I'm trying to get my head around all that. Um, the finance department is helping me um, to learn all this. It will change how the budget looks. It will uh, change slightly how um, how I put things together, but I should have it under control by the fall when I need to start working on the budget. Um, I've also gotten a new computer. <clears throat> so there's been a lot to try to set that up and get things running because I use one computer for both of my jobs. So, um, but I think I finally, I think I finally have that working. Um, so the Christmas stuff, last time we had talked about it and I was given extra money, which I'm very appreciative of. Um, so I've had a meeting with the volunteers, uh, the, the idea of repairing and um, working on the items we have, as well as pot potentially looking at a permanent um, install uh, was very well received. Um, so I have ordered uh, replacement balls and lights for the Reese. Um, we took a look at them. They still look like they're in pretty good shape. We took them out. We looked around. We saw what we needed. Um, the ones that go at the listable signs may need replaced, but I have the, the budget for that, so I'm not worried. Um, if you guys can see this uh, design, there's one other one. Here's the other one. Um, this is kind of what I'm playing with in terms of what um, I would like. This is not exactly what it would look like. I'm going to have to work with um, uh, local companies to design something. But this is kind of the idea of we're thinking um, or something like this. Um, the issue will be where it goes which is you know i i'm thinking it might look good um the green space at the cenotaph location area um there there's a big expanse of green as you walk along the pathway scott and i have just talked about how nice it would be to have many of them but for now we're looking at one we could include this as part of our art because it would be up all year um, if you look at this one, uh, they do have a little bit of um, flowers. We could do different things for the different seasons. So summer, we could have flowers, we could have little twinkle lights, um, but it would be the idea of a permanent selfie um, details. So um, looking for your thoughts, if this is something that people are comfortable with and thinking that um, we like, I would need to work with, um, I think I would be talking to Lindsay about next steps because uh, when we do holiday decorations, they come up and down. So we don't necessarily need permission, but when we're looking at putting something permanently uh, to install, um, we would need to get um, permission from, I assume council. Um, to do that and also uh, because I I'm not sure about the budget I might need to get requests um, for proposals for the cost and go to more than one um, business um, so that's a little I don't do that very often so I would I would be looking for support so um, I don't know Scott um, I do not know what is going on with my computer. Sorry, it's new to me. Um, I don't know, Scott, if um, we want to take a break there um, to talk about that. So you're looking for direction, whether the board likes that idea or that art feature or... Um, yeah, we we had been talking about it, and I said I would do some research. Um, and but before I go, you know, asking council uh, next steps, which I still have to fully figure out. But I think that is what I would have to do um, to determine a location. 
Um, I want to make sure that, you know, that that look, that idea is, is okay, because when we had talked about it before, we had looked at ones that um, weren't permanent, which is not a problem. I pretty much have um, an understanding with the municipality because they aren't permanent, that they can go up, but then they come down. So this is different. So um, it won't look exactly like those pictures, but that's the idea. Okay, does anyone have any feedback for Lisa this morning on what's being proposed? Yeah, I think it looks like a good idea as long as we don't, uh, as long as it's safe and we don't uh, assume any liability for anything that happens with it, so. Yeah, and that would be um, more discussions in terms of um, you know, if we put it up, then we would not necessarily want to be responsible for it in terms of um, different things like we are with the list will sign. Uh, so the proposal to council would have to be written as such. Um, and I believe that we would fall under the insurance for the municipality. But of course, I would clarify that um, with Fran and... Um, different things like that. So pending all that, um, are there any concerns with at least moving forward with uh, to council? Um, also have to figure out that and um, when that would be, um, because we do have um, council changing sooner than later uh, in the fall. So when we would present to them and uh, get approval. I like the idea of a permanent one from a you know, less work standpoint, but it might be subject to damage and vandalism. It's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I, absolutely. Um, so far, we've been really lucky with our holiday decorations, Matt, but I agree with you. There is um, there is that, um, which is why I'd have to talk to Fran about the insurance and um, uh, an understanding from council of what would be our responsibility going forward if we, if we purchased it and had it installed. So just for the board's information some of the things lisa and i've talked about is is making it permanent uh making it four season that it can be decorated for four seasons uh making it potentially something that could be used i think we talked about at the last board meeting but just something that could be used for like wedding pictures or something like that um and those come with their own challenges that if, if people are going to pull over and potentially take a selfie at it or use it for photos that there should be a couple of parking spaces nearby so the logistics of of where to put it uh, and how to make it function and be successful is also part of the considerations that Lisa and I talked about. Um, so if anybody has suggestions on location or viable spot, like I think this is all the stuff that I suggested to Lisa that we need to put in the presentation to council, um, just to answer any of those questions about how it's going to work. Uh, not just that we're buying it and donating it or giving it to the municipality, but uh, the long-term success of it and how it's going to function uh, every day that it's potentially out there and what it would be used for. If I might offer one suggestion here, I think the other piece that uh, you're going to want to look at, and um, you know, I, I just saw what you shared, Lisa, uh, is the the issue of climbability. Um, you know, we, we have uh, folks that uh, may uh, elect to think it a challenge to climb up on this thing. And um, that would be one of those things we would like to discourage. So from a design implementation perspective, one needs to be mindful uh, not to, to create too many steps or opportunities that would allow uh, uh, the ambitious to climb the thing. Good point, thank you.
Any other comments for Lisa or direction? Could I summarize for Lisa that the board is generally in support of what she's proposing and that we should continue to advance? Would that be a fair statement on behalf of the board? Yeah, I'd support that. Okay, I don't know if we need a motion to that effect, Lisa, or whether you'd be fine just taking that acknowledgement that everyone thinks you're on the right path and we should continue to explore it. Um, if we're just continuing to research and write and um, explore, I think we're fine. But if you actually are hoping for me to present to council, then I think I would need a motion. So I don't know where we're at, where you think we're at, Scott. Well, the, I guess the only way it's going to happen is if we put something on paper or, or present it to council. So uh, I guess you do need a motion in order to make something actually take positive steps on this. So if someone could potentially do that, and I guess it's a motion for Lisa to continue to advance this and present it to council in a, a formal presentation or a formal position that we're requesting council permission to do this. Lindsay, I'm sure you can wordsmith something better than that. But uh, if the board is in favor of that, could I get a mover and a seconder? Matt moves it and a seconder. I'll second. Okay, perfect. I see some hands up as well. Perfect. And all in favor? So that's carried. Perfect. Uh, with the art project, um, as per the minutes of the last meeting, Scott and I are going back and forth on that. So I presented um, a draft to Scott. Um, he sent me some feedback. I have now sent him a second draft um, and he's reviewing that um, for feedback. Um, basically where we're at is we're just trying to have as much information in it as possible. Um, different ideas of where the art could be, uh, that it's a four-year project. Um, at this point, um, the total cost of the project, if it stays as is, would be about $200,000, um, with looking for council support of about one hundred and forty. dollars um, Year one would be the most expensive at $87,000. Year two to four would be about $116,000. So Scott and I are just kind of working through that. Um, there's lots of different things that that go with it um, in terms of where we're going to put it, who's going to own it, who's going to be responsible for it once it's up, um, all the advertising, the promoting, um, what the program actually looks like, who the partners are. Um, so it's 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 a bit of work to get this uh, moving, but I think um, Scott and I are getting closer. Um, Scott, I don't know if you want to speak to it. As you noted, I think it's a work in progress. I think it's something um, that I have to give you some more feedback on, and and potentially we should circulate it out to all the board members for their input on it as well. Maybe uh, once we get to a more final draft between you and I. Yeah. And, uh, and then go from there. Yeah. So at the last meeting, we were given a motion was already put in place for Scott and I to keep moving forward with this. So that's what we're doing. Um, there's just a lot of factors. So it takes it's taking a little longer um, than I had hoped, but we are moving forward with it um, and we will continue to move forward with it. Um, so that's where we are with that. Um, this is a really short week for me. I got home last night around 11 from a mini vacation. So I'm only working um, half my hours this week, um, but I am in the office next week and just continuing to work through all our summer promotions as well as starting to look at the uh, winter. Um, the chamber and I, uh, we sat down uh, to talk about the holiday season already, believe it or not. Um, so the parade is going to be in person this year. Um, and what I mean by in person, it's not going to be a drive through is the hope that it will be a traditional parade with Santa at the end for kids to go see. Um, deck the halls, um, the open house, um, although we didn't get the grant for um, 
the big project that I was hoping for. Um, we think there's still uh, the ability to do something that um, during that time, um, it would basically be November 17th to November 26th. Um, then one night, the Thursday, the 17th would be uh, an encouragement of an open house of all downtown businesses to stay open late, maybe a tree lighting ceremony for our trees that we already have. Um, the Canets have said that they'd like to have some kind of carol sing. So we're looking at things that we can do to have downtown open later that day for business, uh, encourage shopping, um, and just encourage um, us to be open for the holiday season. We would have um, some of our decorations up, not all of them, but we would have the wreaths, the trees, um, the banners up, which would have the downtown looking ready to go for the season. Um, and we're also looking at the regular stuff that I normally do, but that's not as pressing as um, the deck the halls um, thing. Um, we also had um, the recruitment specialist reach out to us for doctor recruitment. Um, situation is uh, a little uh, nerve wracking for our community. Um, we have another doctor retiring um, and uh, we're probably going to need 12 doctors in the next uh, few years to have enough doctors for everyone. So she's just looking to um, myself in the chamber just to let her kind of know some of the things that are happening, some of the things that she can promote and tell um, doctors that are coming um, to stay with us for, you know, about a month in time. Um, ones that are close to making a decision of where they're going to end up being. This wouldn't be for the doctors that are coming for a day or two or just to learn about us, but the ones that are actually going to be doing like a, a stay with us and uh, practicing uh, medicine for a little bit while they're here. So just looking at um, how we can provide some information to support them to hopefully support our community. Um, and I think that is everything other than a reminder that I am on vacation July 28th to August 6th. Um, and our next board meeting is in September. Um, and that is on the agenda to discuss, but it is coming up. So that's it for me. Any questions? Not hearing any questions, Lisa. Um, definitely looks like you've had a busy couple of months based on your report. So thank you for all that. Um, we need a motion to receive the coordinator's report for information this morning. If I could get a mover and a seconder for that, please. I see Tammy with a hand up and Sean with a hand up. So I'll take that as a first and a second. And all in favor? And that is carried. Okay. The next item on the agenda is uh, the council update from Mayor Todd. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to, to share with you a little bit of what's going on with Council. Uh, before my comments are done, I'm going to try to uh, encourage a firm commitment from uh, some of you, but I'll come back to that uh, as we get a little further ahead. Um, Council has um, had a number of, of sort of busy files uh, that we've been doing, but you know, certainly many of them are to the uh, to the great benefit of the community. Uh, we have heard since our last meeting a little bit more about um, uh, the uh, notion of having a bird watching area in our community and uh, original concepts uh, and, and the original proposition was that that may happen uh, somewhere near the landfill site um, or near the, sorry, the, the um, sewage treatment site. But uh, in fact, uh, new propositions have us placing a bird watching area uh, near or adjacent to a stormwater management pond that is uh, north of the Steve Kerr um, Westfield Elementary School property uh, in municipal lands there. And, um, and that seems to be moving forward. I think there will be uh, naturally some community concerns about accessibility and, uh, and we'll be having a look at those as, as those emerge and we understand uh, community interest there. 
Um, I think, you know, one of the big things that has happened is that council had its first face-to-face in-chambers uh, meeting of all council uh, this past Monday, and uh, that came after a couple of reports and trying to sort out, um, you know, what technologies and what the preference of council will be. But we were back together in the same room, uh, breathing the same air, and um, I think our first meeting went reasonably uh, well. Uh, with regards to our, our trying to remember how to use some of our technologies to support that. Um, we are still in a hybrid state, though. Uh, that means that delegates and experts and staff and the public can uh, make the choice of connecting either uh, from home or, or the office or they can come uh, to limited gallery space uh, in the council chambers at this point. We are per Dr. Clausen's uh, guidance, uh, at least uh, uh, trying to maintain social distancing uh, precautions uh, in the council chamber. This uh, June, of course, is Pride Month, and uh, council uh, made a bold decision to um, allow the raising of the flag at the municipal building uh, for the uh, first time in our history. Um, there were several other events in the community which I think uh, well represented uh, the LGBTQ2S um, uh, community and, uh, uh, you know, by all accounts, uh, things went quite well. Uh, there has been a first uh, draft report submitted to Council on a project that, that we've loosely been calling the North Perth Agricultural Excellence Strategy. Um, that project... Um, is was commissioned by council to uh, determine uh, whether there are roles for the municipal government to play to support continuance of our agricultural uh, excellence in North Perth. Um, I think sometimes we play with the semantics of, of that terminology because we know that we have excellent agriculture in our area. Our goal is to find out if there's ways to um, fan the fires of excellence and um, and so we've had that first report, and uh, it is available uh, through the North Perth website to read, but um, some interesting possibilities. Um, the report sort of takes a, a, a position that's about uh, 5,000 feet off the ground, and, and we've asked the consultants to get us a little closer to the runway. So um, we expect uh, an additional uh, inputs from the consultants that will help us know whether there are some concrete actions that um, that both the municipal government can help nucleate or facilitate, and uh, and whether there are some actions that um, local the local farming community can engage with and and local business community engage with. So, um, a work in progress. Um, Council uh, did uh, pass a resolution that will um, continue to fund and support the funding of a Lonely No More program. This is a program that's been offered in our community for a little while um, through the Gateway Center of Excellence in Rural Medicine, which is based out of Goderich. Um, They they, um, have... uh, it developed a program that, as I said, has been implemented here for probably 16 months now uh, that provides opportunity for isolated individuals, mostly seniors, uh, but others with health uh, challenges to have weekly phone calls with their peers uh, facilitated by um, others who are interested in uh, doing so. And um, we were the first municipal government to come in and provide some funding so that it can happen in our community. And we are continuing that with success being met and uh, some of our lonely seniors uh, being less lonely as a consequence of uh, this initiative. Um, uh, The hot topic, of course, of late has been the transportation master plan and the one-way block in downtown. Uh, The municipality has opened up a number of public information um, uh, opportunities and input opportunities. Uh, We did hold a first public information opportunity center uh, last month in June, and there's another one coming up. I believe the date is July 13th. There were two sessions that um, anyone in the public interested in in seeing uh, the consulting work and reports and uh, offering their opinions about same uh, are invited to attend. So if you haven't attended one and you have some opinions about um, the the long-term transportation future and traffic future in, in North Perth and Listowel in particular, and uh, and the one-way block uh, experiment, then please uh, make effort to attend or avail yourself of uh, opportunities for input um, that are also available through the website and, and staff. Um, 
<clears throat> council has has um, expressed its desire and and hiring intention by by passing resolution uh, uh, authorizing uh, the corporation to hire a community developer and and uh, this is something that we've received funding for from the city of Stratford which serves as the consolidated service manager for social services and and the like in our area uh, this person will be it, it, the intention is that this person when hired will be uh, boots on the ground uh, dealing with some of the social um, services types of issues in our community and um, Obviously, I think there's some hope that they will engage with files such as affordable housing and homelessness in our in our community, amongst other um, issues. Of course, I'm sure some of you have taken note that um, the village table um, uh, has uh, the, the construction and, and efforts there have now been completed, and that the uh, Salvation Army has now opened the Hope Links uh, area in the village table building, which is the old Anglican church in downtown. Um, list tool. And uh, so that program, uh, while a bit delayed, uh, is now available to the community and addressing some of the same kind of needs that we hope to address through this community developer that we intend to hire. Uh, North Perth also received a, a first report. The council received a first report on an employer branding project. And, um, uh, you know, when we started that project at council, strategically, um, we were we were looking out for the interests of the corporation and uh, making sure that that um, we can present ourselves as a you know a, a, an employer of choice a quality employer um, but i think our our thinking uh, for the community is broader than that and um, and so we have been working on a couple of angles that will extend and create sort of a, a halo around north perth as a great place to work and live um, so you'll see more about that um, and and how that effort begins from the corporation and spreads out um, in the near future, I believe. Um, of course, uh, the list will agricultural fair lies ahead. Uh, uh, we have seen a really great turnout at events in North Perth uh, that celebrate community in the last couple of weeks. The Moncton 165 homecoming uh, weekend was extremely uh, well attended and uh, a smooth and effectively run event. Uh, Atwood's Canada Day celebrations, uh, to my eyes, had record crowds um, uh, for the parade and in the park and uh, went off uh, very effectively as well. So people are out and about. Um, our next big opportunity is the agricultural fair and I encourage all to uh, participate and enjoy all the treats that um, that come with that I know they are looking for some volunteers so if you have any willingness to serve um, you can reach out to the, the usual contacts at the Egg Society um, uh, the service is not too onerous unless you're flipping the hamburgers which is a duty I've had before and um, even then I, I commend it to you if you're uh, interested and willing um, on um, uh, at the Chamber of Commerce lunch with the mayor recently, I you probably have seen in the media, um, invited the community to consider uh, launching an innovation effort. Um, I think that our time has come to um, have some local resources dedicated to innovation, and uh, and I think the challenge is how do we do that. And uh, so I invite the the, um, the BIA and each of you to consider whether um, that you have any willingness or, or energy or even uh, excitement about the idea of uh, trying to nucleate some innovation resources here. To me, uh, something of an innovator in residence or you know a, a dedicated guide uh, to help our community businesses uh, innovate and grow and, um, and diversify in some cases um, is a very appealing idea. Uh, that will take some money. And um, at this point, I'm kind of floating the idea out there, hoping that there will be a, a, a core of people who will say, uh, yes, we'd like to work on that. And uh, we think we can raise a few funds so that we can engage with uh, a part-time uh, innovator in residence uh, to help us um, uh, start charting uh, interesting courses to the future and, and find collaborations and networks. I know that many of you uh, in this call who are on our board um, uh, are doing innovation and uh, the opportunity for for us to sort of um, collaborate and and 
and and accelerate that um, it excites me greatly. I, I I think that um, our time has come on that, and um, and you know we're fairly close to some interesting uh, resources uh, on innovation in the KW region. So um, I, I hope some of you will think about this, and I'd welcome conversations uh, to some degree. Uh, the idea is floated, and now it's how do we um, how do we you know pull it together. Um, and as I said, I know some of you are, are really dynamic in the innovation that field yourselves. So so maybe there's a role uh, f that you're willing to play and can play in our community. Uh, I took note of the comment about public washrooms at, in the downtown and the parquet um, that um, you asked a question about, Scott. And, and uh, this is something that we've been talking about for a while uh, at the municipal government level. And... Um, and yeah, we haven't had that breakthrough yet, uh, but uh, you've reminded me to, to elevate a little bit on my list of priorities and I'll, I'll uh, commence a few more discussions because it's certainly something that I'd like to see happen. Um, and I think uh, finally today, uh, my, my firm request of you, I, I really do want you to uh, heed the invitation that uh, Kim Couch issued earlier. On July 19th, we are having this, this community conversation about um, the, the sort of employment and labor market and the, the future of training and learning for adults in North Perth. Uh, this is a wide open invitation. It's not just for owners of businesses, but it's for employees who are interested in the training mandates and interested in the labor market. Um, we, we want a, a really great representation that day. Um, we have heard uh, a whisper that the Minister of Labor may attend personally. And, um, and so it's an opportunity for our community to show that we are very interested in this file and, and we certainly want um, every input that we can get to help us tailor the uh, learning agenda for our new hub. So um, I, I'm making it a firmer invitation perhaps than Kim did. I'd like to see all of you there. Um, I know that, that the timing may not be perfect, but if you can work your schedules a little bit to arrange to be there, uh, I think uh, you know we have a, a significant opportunity to talk about training and talk about spending um, significant resources. We've been given a, a budget of $1.85 million. That's, that's not a trivial budget. And uh, we want to make a difference for your businesses and for your employees. So uh, we need to know how we can make that difference. And, and we're going to have a, an intelligently facilitated discussion that day. And as I said, with rumors that the minister himself may attend. Uh, we haven't got that confirmed, but um, um, certainly um, that's caught our attention. So please, if you can attend, um, do so. I think that sort of brings me to where I want to be. Um, you've, you've heard Lisa mention that uh, there is an election coming, so uh, um, uh, things will in some ways slow as we come into the fall, um, uh, naturally enough uh, as a consequence of what they call the, the, the lame duck period. We're presuming there will be one, and, um, and uh, there will be you know, some of the agenda will slow, but until then we're uh, rushing at breakneck speed until uh, that point when we need to do so. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Mayor Todd. Any questions for Todd this morning? Not hearing any, okay. Uh, I'm not aware of any correspondence this morning, Lisa, that I mm -hmm. saw or that came through. Okay, so moving on to other business, and, and maybe Todd will help with this as well, but it's uh, a discussion about the format of the future BIA meetings. Uh, so in advance of this meeting, Lisa and I talked about whether we'd go back to an in-person meeting or whether we'd have this one virtual as well, uh, just given that it was in the nature of the summertime and if people were away, they could still log in and stuff. Uh, and um, the social distancing precautions and stuff still going on. Uh, we felt it best to keep this meeting as a, a virtual meeting for the time being. And I know, again, Todd, that uh, Council had a fairly uh, lengthy discussion about going back to in-person meetings or how to do the hybrid model. I'm, I'm not sure if the hybrid model is available to us. Lisa, you may have explored that with municipal staff. Um, but this is just an open opportunity for anyone on the board to discuss whether in September we go back to an in-person meeting or whether we stay virtual for a while yet. Uh, I know there's benefits to those who come from out of town that if uh, 
they don't have to drive to the store for the meeting and there'd be a benefit for them to stay uh, virtual if possible, if that is an option. Um, but just, yeah, if anyone on the board has thoughts or comments about whether we should go back to in-person or whether we should stay in our current format for the rest of the year or what the thought is, that would be, uh, this is the opportunity to figure that out. So any comments, please. Go ahead, Matt. I actually like this format because it's very convenient for everybody. And I almost think we should keep it just for that reason. Uh, as far as the social distancing goes, frankly, in everything else we're doing in life, it's over. Um, so if the board wants to get back together in person, I'm absolutely willing. But I do like this format. Anyone else with some thoughts on this for this morning? I know it's convenient. It saves me a bit of drive time as well. So I, I will admit that I do like this format, but uh, there are some people on the board that I haven't actually physically met yet. Um, so it may be nice to do that. And it's also nice to sit around a table and see some hands go up rather than me trying to scroll through and see who's actually uh, moving and seconding. But uh, Todd, go ahead. Um, I, I find it, um, I, you know, I think all of us have that sort of desire to, to have some socialization. And like you just said, Scott, to you, there's some people you may not have even met uh, in person yet. Um, perhaps uh, as we think about the reboot and the, the sort of convenience that this format offers, we could have one meeting that is, um, that is hybrid or, or that is live. And uh, maybe we do that, you know, uh, in September. And then um, from that point forward, we can uh, gauge uh, the convenience factor. And we still allow, even for the September meeting, uh, for those who um, wish the convenience, uh, the opportunity to, to connect remotely. Um, if we do that, I mean, certainly the, the council chambers provide, uh, uh, you know, a full technology stack really at this point to support that. So it won't be a... a an impediment, as we discovered on Monday, and uh, and um, I'm seeing this with some of the other boards that I serve on, uh, the Swift board, which is rural broadband. Uh, we're having a face-to-face -face meeting this month, but this is the first one that we've had since the pandemic started, and uh, there's no commitment to doing them live after this. It, it may well be virtual after this again, so just a thought. And Lisa, to clarify, did you have discussions with staff about whether we could do a hybrid? I know council has full resources available to them, but I don't know if our, our board would in the 7.30 in the morning. Um, my understanding from Lindsay is that it is possible, but it is definitely uh, more, more challenging. Um, but uh, that was also before the council meeting, which uh, Todd is saying worked um, well doing a hybrid approach is that correct Todd I think we did an effective job it, it does place um, a burden on the chair to use the technology uh, panel uh, in the council chamber and um, and I certainly didn't have a perfect meeting on that score you, you sort of have to plan it out um, but um, generally speaking I, I think we had an effective first live meeting yes um, Lindsay, did you want to jump in here just because um, you're the one that um, was giving me the updates? So I don't I don't want to speak incorrectly. Sure, thank you, and through you, Chair Patterson. Um, so with council, we had all the members back in person. So um, it would be a little bit different if we were doing a hybrid BIA meeting with members being re with some remote and some in person. I think. There would be a challenge like when we're doing take when we're taking the votes because i'm when we did the council meeting all the members in chambers weren't able to see necessarily everyone who was attending remotely um so there might be some logistical considerations in terms of that like the, who's ever attending in council chambers might not be able to see everyone who's attending remotely, if that makes sense. So we might need to look into it a little bit further. 
from an IT um, perspective. So I, so I think, I think it's a definitely more challenging for us, like, because we don't really have a lot of members of the public attending. So um, it's definitely easier if we're either in person or we're virtual versus a hybrid. And I, perhaps we don't need to make a decision right this moment, but yeah, I, I suspect that I agree with what Lindsay said. Maybe the board members have to attend in person just for, for voting and other procedural matters. Um, but someone uh, just selecting Justin, perhaps if he is commuting from Stratford, maybe it makes more sense to have him um, just participate virtually. So he doesn't have to commit that drive time or something like that. That's, that's an option. I would just like to, to make this functional for everyone. And uh, if you are driving, I recognize I I fully appreciate not having to drive to meetings now. I can spend more time at my desk, unfortunately. Um, but it is a benefit and I think we're all used to it. So let's uh, just to wrap it up, and then maybe we can continue to discuss it, Lisa, and, and make a decision for September. Or we Absolutely. need to let, let council go through a couple more and see if they can get all the bugs worked out of a a hybrid model and then we could uh, piggyback on that after the fact or something but before christmas we should definitely have uh or sorry the holiday season we should definitely try and have one more uh, at least a in-person meeting of some kind i think would be beneficial so um, yeah other... and we have we have a meeting in september and then in november so um that definitely gives council more time to have some more of these meetings for me to talk to Lindsay. Um, I definitely think it could be possible to have it in September in person, but um, it is also very convenient for me to be at home, even though I only live um, three minutes from the office, because it means I can sleep longer, um, because I'm not a morning person. So um, I do appreciate the idea of um, virtual. So we'll, I think council has a few more meetings before September, Scott. So we'll just connect in August and make a decision. Um, if, if everyone in the meeting could just uh, keep in mind, it might be in person so that we're prepared for that, but that Scott and I will talk in August to give a confirmation. Does that work, Scott? Yeah, unless anyone on the board says otherwise, I think that's the direction we should take right now and we'll we'll keep everyone posted. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not aware of any new business. It's not a topic on the agenda that I see, but if, if there's any new business this morning from anyone, I'm not aware of any. Um, again, as always, thanks everyone for their time and their commitment to the BIA. Uh, thank you, Lisa, for your continued efforts and what you do and uh, she was 100% correct her golf game was much better this year um, I borrowed some anyways, clubs I think we need some... a... <laughs> so we can move to a, a motion to adjourn this morning I see Brad and the seconder and would be Sean yeah. and uh, I'm sure everyone's in favor and that's carried and uh Lisa and I will continue to work on things and we'll keep the board posted. And otherwise we'll see you in September. Have Thank a you. great summer, everyone.